r slash ask reddit what proverb or saying has never made sense to you rules were made to be broken no they weren't mother ducker rules were made based on worst case scenarios because some idiots ducked up one time but since we aren't in a worst case scenario and are reasonably competent people with good judgment we can break the rule as long as we manage the risk of the outcome that the rule was trying to prevent just doesn't have the same ring Unless the rule was made to evaluate if someone is enough of a deviant to break the rules. So I've been going to this secret underground club lately. It's beat down. Time. My mum breaks out it says, insert word here, as a witch's tit on the regular. She'll switch between it's as dry as a witch's tit in summer. I'm as dry as a witch's tit when thirsty. It's as cold as a witch's tit or it's as hot as a witch's tit. I don't know what witches she's been hanging around with but she knows their tits well. Edit. I'm going to ring mum tonight and casually slip flat as a witch's tit into the conversation. So she adds it to her repertoire. I've only heard this as part of a longer phrase, as cold as a witch's tit in a brass bra. Okay, so I actually know the origin of this one. The idea is that witches would suckle their familiars, demon buddies from unholy devil marks, because the devil would leave them on the body when somebody was accused as a witch. They would search the body for these marks and usually find a particularly lumpy mole or round scar etc. Something most people have. But while let common biology get in the way of a good hysteria, this nipple would be unfeeling or cold. One of the ways to test for witches was to take a needle to the devil mark and if the person didn't bleed or respond in enough pain. Obviously they had found the spot where the witch suckled her demon spawn. Over time this particular method of witch hunting fell out of favor. But the idea of devil marks and, well witches tits kept on. Today it's still a fairly common expression, even if nobody understand what a witch's tit is anymore. About halfway through reading this I 100% expected this comment to end with a mention of mankind being thrown off hell in a cell or hallucinated owls or something. All relevant. Uncommon. Useful but unsourced knowledge has become suspect on reddit. All's fair in love and war. My exes would disagree with the former. The Geneva conventions would disagree with the latter. You know what they say about love and war. Yeah, one involves a lot of physical and psychological pain, and the other is war. Needless to say followed by saying the thing that's needless to say. Normally, I wouldn't need to say this, but since you're a ducking idiot, this is basically what it means. So it's a less obnoxious way of saying well obviously. Double quote. The proof is in the pudding. I always love that saying. Even though I don't usually say, I think it's kind of funny weird. Apparently that was shortened from the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Basically you know it's good when you eat it. But I just read that on the internet. So. This is correct. It refers to a pudding that looks beautiful. But you won't know if it fulfills its most basic intended purpose. Being delicious. Until you actually eat it. If it's terrible to eat. A beautiful appearance is just a false promise. It's always the last place you look. Obviously. Why the hell would I keep looking after I've found it? It's a corny joke based off of the actually helpful phrase. It's in the last place you'd think to look. As in. Broaden your thinking. Because checking the same 5 obvious places over and over isn't yielding any progress. I'd say it came about from people saying it's in the last place you'd look. And other people missing that be it and parroting it as it's in the last place you look. Drive it like you stole it. You mean 5 under the speed limit obeying all laws to avoid getting noticed? Blowing smoke up someone's ass. There's more than one way to skin a cat. What the duck? Who came up with this? Why would you skin a cat to begin with? It's about catfish. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Fish. Nail that ducker to a tree and pull off the skin with pliers. Well I guess that's one way to do it. There's more than one though. My father always used the line your ass sucks canal water when calling someone on their bullshit. No idea what it means but I love to use it. This one is great. Instead of complaining about common sayings this just actually makes no sense. It's cause you're spewing shit out of your mouth so it creates a negative pressure in your a-hole that sucks up nearby canal water. A guy I worked with used to tell people they talked like a man with a paper a-hole. Also never knew what it meant but loved it. Can't keep shit in. If winners never quit, and quitters never win, then whose bright idea was it to quit while you're ahead? 
the Atlanta Falcons. This still hurts 7 months later, a piece of me died during the 4th quarter and I shed a tear when I see 28-3 memes. You're the apple of my eye. The devil is beating his wife an old saying for when it rains while the sun is shining. I find this expression so creepy. Dropping the kids off at the pool apparently meaning taking a shit I always thought it would make more sense if it referred to wanking into the toilet. Dropping the browns off at the Super Bowl. Except that'll never happen for real. As in little shits. Kid are little shits. It's raining cats and dogs. I think it was made somewhere in 1800s London. There were lots of dead street dogs and cats there and whenever it rained heavy their dead body used to flow on the streets. Hence raining cats and dogs. Bro, 1800s London was not a nice place. 1800s anywhere was not a nice place. Did you step in a poodle? It's all Greek to me. I'm Greek for years I thought it meant. Makes sense. This is a line from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. A messenger is recounting to Brutus and Cassius that Caesar was addressing the masses and spoke briefly in Greek. When they pry the messenger to translate he replies I don't know. It was all Greek to me. Slept like a baby to describe a good night's sleep. Have you ever met a baby? They're atrocious sleepers. I think it's supposed to mean without worries. This is exactly what it means. Straight from the horse's mouth. Horses don't talk. The phrase originated in horse racing. People were constantly trying to figure out which horse was going to win. And bandying tips from more and more informed sources. I heard it from the stabler boy I heard it from the trainer slash I heard it from the jockey that such and such horse is going to win. The best source is obviously the horse itself. Thus straight from the horse's mouth. I could double check this. But I'm going to repeat what I was told without evidence. The way to determine the age of a horse is to inspect their teeth. So you could ask the seller how old the horse he is selling is or you could get it straight from the horse's mouth. Incidentally, that's why you shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth because it is rude to be picky with a gift in front of the giver. Though it is prudent to fear the Greeks. Even when they come bearing gifts because if it is a giant wooden horse, that one you should probably inspect. It's like comparing apples and oranges. But I gotta thank Lil Dongi for bringing this one to my attention. Beach that phrase don't make no sense why can't fruit be compared. But I think the real question here is. Do you duck with the war? Beach don't know about Panji. A barking dog never bites. Unfortunately I know for a fact that's not true. Well if a dog is currently barking it cannot also be biting at the same time. Typically used when someone makes a lot of threats but never actually follows through on them is the usage. Um, Cerberus? That can both bark and bite at the same time. Take it with a grain of salt. Huh. I had a teacher for whom English was his second language. And he always thought it was take it with a grave of salt. What is a shit eating grin? Money can't buy happiness. You ever seen anyone sad on a jet ski? Sadly go cards. You've made your bed, now you have to lie in it. But, I just made it, though. Knowledge is power. France is bacon. Time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas. Probably in Tennessee. That says, fool me once. Shame on. Shame on you. Fool me. You can't get fooled again. I once said to my ex. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And she freaked out trying to wrap her head around it. Forbade me from ever saying it again. It's like Yoda is having a stroke. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. A stroke may not kill you but you sure as hell won't be stronger after it. It's a reference to Nietzsche. Was Mitch Nishtumbrint. Marked Mitch Stalker. He's fairly notorious for being highly metaphorical. Really nothing Nietzsche ever said retains its meaning out of context. Slow and steady wins the race. Bullshit. I've heard not all races are sprints which I think works much better. From Dimitri Martin. I don't get that people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. How about just don't throw stones? That's shitty behavior. Also if I'm trapped in a glass house and I've got a stone. What am I gonna do? Not throw it? So really only people in glass houses should throw stones. Provided that it is the only way out of that house. A lot of people really don't understand common adages. 
Yeah I never understood this one either. We're not here to duck spiders heard this one from some Aussies when backpacking. I always use it now but have no clue what it really means. You guys want another beer? Well we're not here to duck spiders. And we drank. Don't put your mouth all the way over the water fountain spout. It's just one of Pawnee's little quirks. Like the killer raccoons. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Sounds like a pretty decent road. Hate to see the road made out of bad intentions. Don't do the wrong thing for the right reasons. Putting the violin and the roof equals Welsh saying meaning giving up. Over the dishes equals another Welsh saying meaning over the top. Mind you. I'm not surprised coming from the country who refer to a microwave as a pop ping. Etymology time. Pop tea comes from two Welsh words poby, baking, and Thai, house, so a pop tea is a baking house, or a bakery, but it also refers to the oven inside the baking house, and ping is an anomatopoeia, so pop tea ping is the oven that goes ping, which is adorable. Whoa, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.